This film feels like a very sort of convenient one to shoot in the midst of a pandemic. I wondered if the idea came before that it's been something that's with you a while, or did you think when the sort of world shut down, you wanted to create a movie that was sort of relatively easier to shoot during that, that time? <laughs> I actually wrote it just pre-pandemic, when nobody knew what was about to happen in January 2020. Um, and, it, you know, so it was completely unrelated. Um, what I have always tried to do in my writing career particularly, and it's something to do with coming from TV, I think, is just write something that's reasonably inexpensive to make. <laughs> and then you could, you've got more chance of it getting made. Um, and this was an idea I'd had for a long time, many years, that had been rumbling around in my head and I pictured the opening scene a lot. And then I would sort of just thought, I need to know what happens. And I can only really do that by sitting down and writing it. So I did that in January, 2020, and then I put it away in thought I don't really know what to do with that no one will ever see it <laughs> so and then I got on with some other work I had to do and so it was only actually in around June 2020 when I was put in touch with Debbie Gray the producer who was looking for things that might fit the new regulations around filming in the UK and I said well actually I've got this thing that's two people in a hotel so would you like to read it because uh, I guess it doesn't get much more COVID safe than that <laughs> um, so it was completely fortuitous and and not in the least bit um planned or calculating um, but um, but yes it, it's a very interesting way that that came together. Well, I mean Nancy is a character we don't see enough in cinema and there's conversations being had in this movie we don't hear enough in cinema so was there a bit of an element of thinking well if I don't see it then I've got to go and create it? I mean partly I, it wasn't like I went into this with a kind of an agenda or kind of I've got to settle some scores and write some wrongs and do some representing or you know I, I don't see myself as any kind of activist or campaigner I just want to write interesting entertaining films about things that I find interesting and entertaining and this seemed to fit the bill so yes I, I wanted to write Nancy's character and Leo's character and I wanted to see what happened when those two characters talk to each other um, and it just so happens that we don't get to see women particularly and particularly in that age bracket just talk honestly humorously intimately about things that are on their mind and you know these are very human things and and they should be represented across all demographics. So yeah, I'm glad that that's the result, but it wasn't a conscious decision so much. It was just more, I find this really interesting. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't even just all the sort of sex chat. I mean, even just her talking about sort of not liking her son. It's quite <laughs> an honest, which <laughs> a really funny one. I found that yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. So when I typed that, I thought, because yeah. I hadn't thought of it before, it just came out in the dialogue, you know, that she found her son boring. And um, that just made me laugh for about two days. Because <laughs> so, us, us Brits, we can be quite prudish. Mm. And this film tackles a range of subjects and there's conversations about threesomes, orgasms, you know, all sorts of types of sex. And even me just saying those words out loud, I had to look at my sheet and look slightly embarrassed. But <laughs> how is it writing them all down? Did you have to get past that sense of prudish and just go, look, this is, we, these are conversations and dialogues that should be had and we should be maybe more open about speaking about it. But when you were typing it, was there ever a sense of having to get through what I just got through asking it? <laughs> um, well, because I was writing it unbriefed and uncommissioned, mm. I honestly just thought no one's ever going to see this. So I felt very unbridled. I thought I can just write for the f for once. I can just write whatever I want. Um, and so, no, at the time I was writing it, um, I didn't feel so bad about that. And also I wanted it to be funny. And I think, you know, you can get away with an awful lot if people are funny. And I wanted them to be funny to each other, not just funny to the audience. And so the humour kind of saved me from that. So when I was actually writing it, I just assumed no one would ever see it. So it, it only, I think, when it actually felt like it was going to get made, started to dawn on me <laughs> that there was a lot of stuff in there that, yeah, I think people might find a bit... But I think, you know... Part of the film, I think, part of what we all want to say with the film is that there's no need to be prudish about your own body and about things that are very natural, like having sex. That, that These are things that should just be open and naturally explored and that should be enjoyed. And so I think that's, we're all just trying to get past that, I think. Yeah, because I mean, you obviously said there wasn't a, like an agenda behind this, but there are really positive messages to come out of this. I mean, obviously the idea, the notion of shame, this idea that there's nothing to be ashamed about when it comes to desire or pleasure, and also the uh, that whole notion of feeling comfortable in your own skin, which is a lot of something a lot of people are taking out of that. Are you quite, when you ask, when you speak to people that have seen it at festivals and stuff, even though you might not have necessarily really wanted to push a message on them, is you please it's being received, that kind of idea that people are watching this and make, it's making them feel quite uplifting and more comfortable in their own skin. Yeah, I'm delighted with that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm delighted with that. Absolutely delighted with that. And I'm very, 
um, happy that that's the result because I really do want to write the films that are ultimately uplifting. That was something we discussed when we were when it went into production. We wanted it to feel empowering and uplifting. And all of my favourite films that I used to watch when I was younger always left with me with this feeling at the end that I could be invincible, that I could try anything, I could go on an adventure, do something. And so that is a priority for me going forward with, with writing films, that, that there is an element of positivity, not, not to be sort of in denial about the world or reality, but that ultimately you want to leave people with that fizzing, excited feeling at the end of a film, which is what I loved when I watched films when I was younger particularly, and, and I think is such an important part of filmmaking. It doesn't all have to be harrowing. I respect all of that side of filmmaking, but it's not in me to pursue that, and I would like to take it in this direction. And, and again, my, my bywords are, is it interesting, is it entertaining? And that's all I want to do, really. Oh, well, you see on both camps. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Emma and Daryl have become Nancy and Leo, and I mean, in this movie, they're so brilliant. Um, did you have either of them, I mean, did you have Emma in mind when you were writing it? And, and if not, how much, as a writer, because I guess you have a kind of idea of who your characters are, you create them, but how much did you kind of end up realizing they've been taken away and become, and grown into something completely different when an actor kind of gets hold of them? I mean, I did write it for Emma. Well, I wrote it with Emma in mind. I never in my wildest dreams thought I would actually be sitting here talking about her being in it. Um, like I say, initially I thought if I could just write this as a small, relatively inexpensive play, someone might put it on somewhere. Um, and so, but I did have her cadences, her brilliant way of moving from drama to comedy to drama in an instant, everything about her. So, but and and she just understood it immediately. And when I sent it to her with some respectful trepidation, and she just came back and said, "I know this woman. I know. I know this. I feel this. I get it." And she absolutely did. And and then she just because she's a world class actress and because she's Emma Thompson, she took it and just made it a thousand times better. And in fact, one of my favourite bits of her performance is completely non-verbal. It's a look she gives to Leo in their dance, which is just the whole film summed up in one look. <laughs> so they do take it from you, but I'm happy with that because if you're going to collaborate on a film and make it a film, all of these things have to happen. They need to take it on, the director needs to take it, they make it their own. Um, otherwise, it's just a sort of script or a sort of slightly weirdly laid out book and we haven't got a film. So, um, so yeah, that's part of the joy of it for me, seeing them take it and make it better. And just very quickly, my final question is, because we were sort of started by talking about the pandemic, but during the pandemic, loads of people went back and revisited all their favorite shows, and I went back and watched Peep Show for like the 15 millionth time. Mm -hmm. And you are in one of the greatest moments <laughs> or scenes in British comedy history, <laughs> uh, in the, the, the Mummy scene. I just wonder, do you remember when you first got the script? Do you remember shooting that scene? Was that... Do you, did, did you remember thinking while you were making this, that scene, that this is something that could and would be remembered as one of being something sort of iconic in British comedy history? I don't <laughs> think I realised how iconic that bit was going to be, but what I did know was that I was already a gigantic fan of Peep Show and that I was just honoured and just overwhelmed that I was going to actually be in it. And just basically the whole time we were shooting it, and I remember every moment nearly of the shooting, um, just thinking, I can't mess this up. I don't want to let them down. I can't believe I'm part of this show just for one episode. So no, I, I knew it was funny. I knew it was going to be very funny and, and really sort of slightly alarming. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, it really had took off. And I've still got both the scripts. I've got the rehearsal script and I've got the shooting script, which are slightly different. And I really treasure those. Mm -hmm. Um, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Katie. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. thank you. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You 